Next on BYUSN, it's game day eve for BYU men's basketball as the Cougars hit the old country roads to Morgantown. We'll discuss what needs to happen for BYU to beat West Virginia. Also, linebacker Ben Bywater will join us in Studio B. He'll tell us how his shoulder's doing and why he decided to come back to BYU for one more season. It is a mega weekend in the Big 12 that could reshape the conference standings. There are six games involving a ranked team, two matchups where both are in the top 25. Plus, we'll dive into the deep blue and spotlight former Cougar star Jeff Chapman. His experience at BYU was a game changer for the basketball program and a life changer for him. Welcome into BYU Sports Nation, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Today is Friday, February 2nd. My name is Jason Shepard, and this guy has requested that we refer to him as Punxsutawney Dave. He is Dave McCann, or excuse me, Punxsutawney Dave. The, uh, Groundhog Day classic film. <laughs> yes. Whenever you're driving and you're a little upset, what, what voice do you hear? Don't drive angry. <laughs> Um, I wish I heard that more. Listen, so uh, the Groundhog came out today. Mm -hmm. And, and what uh, does that mean? I can never remember it, which he, one it means. He didn't see a shadow. Okay. So that means that it's an early spring. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now, Which is good for our baseball team yes, and our softball is. team. It is, for sure. <laughs> and it might be for basketball. Remember yeah. last year he came out, saw his, uh, saw his shadow, and it was an extended winter. Uh, BYU went 5-5 five and five the rest of the way in the WCC and took fifth place and missed the postseason. This year... Doesn't see a shadow. There are 11 games left in the Big 12. If BYU wins five, they're going to go to the NCAA tournament. So, based on what's happened today, I like our chances. Okay, I like the way that you're projecting out <laughs> with the BYU teams based off of whether Punxsutawney well, Phil saw the it's shadow. It's more of a groundhog projection. I like it. My, now, my friend Kevin Eubank, uh, they doesn't like Groundhog Day because people are funny when it comes to the sure. weather. Yeah. Uh, he'll present a thing with graphs, charts, satellite images, history and all this <laughs> stuff of, of the storm or whatever. And everyone goes, yeah, what, what, what did the groundhog say? And he's just like, what? I'm, t I'm telling you. This is, this is science. This is the groundhog. But for some reason, folklore has it, we listen to the, yes. to the groundhog. So yes. in early spring, that's good for the basketball program. That's good for our spring sports. Absolutely. Let's you go know, with that. You know what else is good? All rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending. Every game in the Big 12 is just a physical battle. And he hammers it home! Three for three! Yes! yes! He got it! There's no nights off, so we know what we're stepping into and, and we're going to be prepared. By the way, could you grow a beard like that guy? No. Like the, the mountaineer? There's no, not a I, chance in the I world I can. I could get pretty rough, but, but that's a classic work. My son has a beard very similar to this. I'm serious. To the point where when we're together, I think most people think he's the dad and I'm the son. Really? Probably. Yeah. I'd like to see that. <laughs> Number 22, BYU men's basketball hits the country roads to Morgantown, plays West Virginia tomorrow night. Now, with a win, BYU can improve to 500 in Big 12 play and would pick up their second road win of the conference season. West Virginia, 3-5 and five in the Big 12 this season, but 3-1 and one at home with wins against... Kansas, Texas, and Cincinnati. Those are all recent victories there in Morgantown. So let's discuss how BYU beats West Virginia on the road by filling in the blank, Dave. Start us off here. BYU beats West Virginia if dot, dot, dot. Dallin Hall doesn't get in foul trouble. And, and that's been a challenge for him. In these four losses in the Big 12, he's been chained by fouls uh, in, on all four of them. Um, four against Houston, fouled out against Texas, Tech, uh, and Baylor, and then he had four against Cincinnati. So in the four losses, the guy who needs to be loose and free out there running the show has been on the bench with fouls. And, and a lot of those have come early in the game yeah. where he's sitting on the bench for a good part of that first half, and then he has to be conservative in the second half. Dallin Hall's at his best when he can be aggressive, he can attack the basket, he can play hard-nosed defense, um, and you can do all of those things when you aren't in foul trouble. But when you're in foul trouble, it changes your game. It sometimes moves Jackson Robinson to the point he's not a point guard, yeah. and then things are a little discombobulated at that point. 
Dallin Hall stays out of foul trouble. BYU can win that game. See, the, the first one that I, I go to is BYU can beat West Virginia if they have a strong start, especially when you're dealing with a team that is has obviously proven to be very good at home, not just beating scrubs in the conference. We're talking about the upper echelon of teams uh, when you're talking about KU and Texas, and obviously we saw how good Cincinnati is. If you can come out and have one of those strong starts and really maybe put some early doubt in the opposition's mind, I think that changes everything. We've seen the other side of the coin where when you come out and you have a really slow start and then it's an uphill climb the rest of the game, just how difficult that can be when you're facing a team that plays so well at home. So I, the way I look at it is don't give West Virginia another chance to knock off a ranked team. And I think that starts with a very strong start on the road. Take a look at those numbers, and as you look at those, I'm going to go to my, my next point is that BYU can win this game if Fusini Treore plays more than 20 minutes. He's still got a hamstring issue. That's yeah. just going to bother him the whole time. He's got to get it warmed up and, and, and all that stuff before he can go in, but he played uh, 18 minutes against Texas, 16 points, 6 rebounds. Before that, 10 minutes against Houston, 7 points. Didn't come in until late in the game. Uh, and then before that, 12 minutes at Texas Tech, he had 8 points and 8 rebounds. He hasn't exceeded 20 minutes of playing time since Thanksgiving yeah. before that injury occurred. But West Virginia's got Jesse Edwards, who's 6'11". He's now back, and he had 25 points and 10 boards Wednesday against Cincinnati in his first game back. Um, so he's a thing. And Fusini Traore is BYU's best big man defender. He's got to be on the floor. And if he's on the floor for 20 minutes or more, that means he's in a groove, he's producing, he's defending, and, uh, and he also is out of foul trouble. So one of the keys for BYU to win at West Virginia is Fus. And I'm looking at 20 minutes. Yeah. If it's 20 minutes or more of him on the floor, Things are working for BYU. Yeah, I'll stay with, uh, with Foose, a Foose-related uh, answer for me as well. And, and I'm going to go with, I think BYU needs to have at least four players in double figures. But I'm going to take that one step further. At least two of those need to be Jackson Robinson and Foose. And when you look at what BYU has done recently, because obviously there was that stretch of seven games where Foose wasn't playing, and so you, you didn't have him there. But when BYU really got on this run... And now with him back in the lineup, their success seems to come when he, when he plays well, certainly, now that he's sort of rounding back into form and getting his legs back underneath him, but in, in Jackson as well. When, when Jackson Robinson plays well, BYU is so tough to beat. So I think you need at least four and double figures for just to get your scoring in general. But Jackson and Foose need to be the guy. And, and the, the thing that I like about what Foose brings and how he can get his points is it is different from the way BYU is playing. It gives them another option, another style of a way to play. Because for those seven games, you weren't throwing the ball into the paint and going to work very much. Now you have that option to do it. So you can throw a, diff a couple of different schemes offensively at West Virginia. So for me, Jackson and Foose need to be for sure two of those at least four players scoring in double figures. Notice we haven't said BYU beats West Virginia if they score more points. I was, I'm, I'm, I haven't. Know every, you, yes. You're thinking it, and that's what everyone's saying. I was immediately, when I saw that, when we put it out on social media, I was immediately going to put, and please don't be the one oh, that yeah. says score more points. And, I don't know, know if anybody's done that or I'm not. I'm sure they have. I'm sure they have. <laughs> it's the natural instinct. Yes. Um, I think BYU beats West Virginia if they have fewer turnovers than the Mountaineers. Now, that's easier said than done. Yeah. It's also an easy stat to point to. But there are a couple of interesting uh, things. BYU is number two in the Big 12 in assists. West Virginia is number 13. BYU is number one in assists to turnover ratio. Uh, West Virginia is number 13. And West Virginia is number 14 out of 14 teams in, the, in steals, yeah. which means they're not, they're not taking the yes. ball away from you. So. If you don't give it to them, you can, you can come out ahead in that stat right away. If you're just smart with how you take care of the ball. Not unlike the women's team, which is number one in the country in steals for West Virginia. This men's team isn't that. And, uh, and as you see, BYU passing up good shots for better shots. That's been the key the whole season. Take care of the basketball. Uh, the fewer turnovers, the better, of course. And I think if that stat favors BYU, they'll win on the road, which is a tough thing to do. But... Um, they're tailor-made to take care of the ball, but in games that they yeah. haven't, yeah. they've gotten beat. Yeah, you and I are on the same page because my last one was limit turnovers, and that goes without saying. And, and to what you said, that's something that, that BYU has actually done a very good job with this year. But 
in, in those games where they have struggled, the turnover numbers have gone up. And beyond just turnovers, because we know not every turnover is created equal. You can have a turnover, but ultimately it doesn't hurt you if maybe the team doesn't score. What you have to avoid, I think, in a game like this is those turnovers leading directly to points. That's where BYU has gotten into some trouble with, with not just turning the ball over in some of these losses, but where it's led directly to points on the other end. That's what will kill you in a game like this. And we've already talked about the confidence level that this team plays with at home. You, you can't give them any opportunity to provide energy for themselves and for the crowd. And certainly forcing a turnover and, and points off of it will, will do that. Well, this is a significant day because as a Cardinals fan and a Cubs fan, we are on the same page. <laughs> that is true. That might not happen again uh, <laughs> for the rest of the year, but it, but it is today. And, and everything we said, all those things are going to happen. BYU is going to have some turnovers that cost them. They're going to not get some key offensive rebounds. Uh, uh, Foos isn't going to make every shot. Yeah. Robinson's not going to make every shot. Dallin Hall might get in some really foul trouble. That's just life on the road in the Big 12. We're, we're drumming up a, a recipe of here's how to do this. Yeah. And then, then, then here's what's happening. And then you've got to react. And uh, if, if they can get a taste of all of what we've pointed out, then that can help in their reaction of, okay, we just had two turnovers that cost us. Let's make sure the next four don't. Yeah. And we stay in this game, give ourselves a chance to win. Now, obviously, BYU has already traveled to UCF. So they, they've made one of those long trips. This is obviously the other longest trip that you'll make. Do you like the fact that BYU has, did not have a game in the, in the middle of the week that they had the midweek by? Do you like that coming off the big win that they had and, and knowing that they were going to be going on the road to a tough place to play? If you ask me that tomorrow night about 9 o'clock, <laughs> I'll tell you, that really worked. Yeah. It seemed good because BYU had the flu bug yep. and uh, some nicks and bruises. They've had all week to get that right. In theory, they should roll into this game as healthy as they've been in yep. a long time. Foose's hamstring needed some rest. That's where I think it helps the most uh, is with Foose. knee needed yep. some rest. Yep. Um, and, and you know what? The more rest Jackson gets on that ankle, uh, he's still trying to get back to his form before yep. the sprained ankle. Um, and so I think all of that is good. The question is, you know, West Virginia won at home on Wednesday. They're feeling good. Uh, they're, they're looking at this as sweet BYU's coming. Yeah. We can get them, and that'll help our net and help us climb out of the, the, of, of the bottom of the, of the league. And so they're looking for BYU on, on the heels of momentum. And BYU has been a long time since they beat Texas. Feels like a long time ago. Yeah. Um, and how they can recreate that energy coming out of the locker room. It'll be interesting to see how they start with a week off because they haven't had that. Yeah. But if they can maximize the energy and freshness coming out of the locker room, hit a couple of early shots and then go, hey, West Virginia, we've, we, right. we've come to play. Yeah. Um, that, that, those first few minutes are going to be very interesting. Yeah, that's why I, I think a strong start is, is just so massive. And it's not specifically just in this game. While, while it is, it's, it's every road game in this league. You have got to set the tone early if you're going to go out and win on the road in the Big 12 Conference. It is so difficult to win road games in this conference. It just is. And we knew it going in, but now, now, we're, now we're seeing it week in. Game, almost every night there's a game in the Big 12. We're like, did you just see who beat so-and-so? Yeah. Like, it seems like we're saying that every night. Some, sometime we're going to get to the point where we stop saying it's so hard yeah. here or super hard yeah. or difficult. It just is what yep. it is. And, and everyone in it, it's a privilege to be in it. But right now, it's the first time through, and dang, you know, it's yeah. the first thing you do is scratch your head and go, man, that's kind of hard. I know. It's crazy. All right, well, we answered the question. Now it's time for you to answer our question of the day, and it is this. Fill in the blank. BYU beats West Virginia if dot, dot, dot. The first one coming in on X from Travis Tingey. He says they pass the ball well and score 30 points from inside the three-point line. So getting Which pretty specific. Texas. Yeah, if both of those things happen, BYU will get good looks from three and score a ton of points against a team that won't be able to keep up offensively. And, and I agree. That I, what BYU did against Texas kind of messed up everybody else's scouting report right. in the Big 12 because they thought they had BYU pegged, well, all they're going to be is a three-point shooting team. Well, now you get Foose and you have the low post present. And you've also got guys that are now willing to go drive to the rim. That, that changes a lot in terms of the scouting report on BYU. And if they can do it a second time, then it's a change yes, yes. that's going to be the rest of the way. Absolutely. All right, uh, on Facebook uh, from Sharon uh, Profiter, says they can handle the West Virginia crowd. Don't sleep on them. It could be brutal. 
It could be. Could be, yeah. Could be. Saturday yeah. night, Morgantown. Football team went back there and got smacked around. They, yeah. they got, oh, my gosh, <laughs> this was crazy. And now it's indoors and confined. And, and again, they're fired up from Wednesday. I think it's going to be very interesting. All right, continue to weigh in on our question of the day. Uh, use hashtag BYUSN on X, Facebook, and Instagram. All right, before we take a break, uh, let's take a look at some of the other games going on in the Big 12 tomorrow with today's Big 12 Roundup. It's like a Super Saturday. It basically is. It really is. Texas is at number 25, TCU. The Longhorns are a five-point favorite, according to Ken Palm. But TCU is hot, and, and uh, don't look past the Horn Frogs, especially in Fort Worth. TCU coming off three straight wins. Texas has won nine of the previous 11. This is the last time Texas is going to go to Fort Worth. Look for the Horn Frogs. You know they want this one. They're going to pounce. Yeah. All right, number 12, Iowa State at number 18, Baylor, one of two ranked uh, on ranked opponents this weekend. Baylor beat UCF earlier in the week. Iowa State had a midweek bye, so getting a little rest before taking on the Bears. Baylor four and three in conference play. Iowa State is five and two. The Bears are a three point favorite in this matchup. This is a very intriguing game. Yes, at 100%. It's one where you're like going, I've got no idea. I don't care it's in Waco. You know? Who won in Waco the other day? TCU. <laughs> in triple overtime. That's right. All right, the mega matchup of the weekend is number four, Houston, at number eight, Kansas. Um, this, this, this is the number one game in America. Uh, Houston's won five straight, and they've won in a variety of different ways. They've won when they haven't played great, and they've won when they have played great. That makes them, they're a Final Four capable team. Uh, Kansas undefeated at home. You were just there. It's I a tough there. place. It's a tough place for the out-of-towners. There's no question about it. <laughs> but uh, Houston's a five-point favorite, according to Ken Palm. I'd be surprised if they don't win again. Yeah, I, I can't wait to watch that game. Uh, next matchup, Cincinnati at number 15, Texas Tech. Texas Tech coming off a loss to TCU. Cincinnati coming off a loss to West Virginia, as we were just talking about. Uh, Tech is 5-2 and two in conference play. Cincy now 3-5 and five in the Big 12. The Red Raiders favored to beat the Bearcats by four. Yeah, they're playing in Lubbock. That's going to be a tough night for yep. Cincinnati. Yep. Uh, Oklahoma, they're now 23 after a couple of losses taken on UCF. UCF's kind of settled into the team everyone expected. They were picked 14th. They're kind of just kind of heading down that way. Uh, Oklahoma's coming off a win over Kansas State, and uh, they're a three-point favorite on the road at UCF. We've seen that arena. That arena can be a tough yep. atmosphere, but, uh, but Oklahoma's better than UCF. We'll see if home court's enough to turn the tide. Well, Oklahoma State is hosting K-State, and both these teams struggling right now. Uh, the Wildcats have lost three in a row. They're four and four in the Big 12. Oklahoma State is one and seven in the Big 12. The Wildcats right now a one-point favorite on the road in Steelwater. Keep your eye on those two teams, because yeah. BYU plays them That's right. a whole bunch of times. Yep. All right, as mentioned, it's number 22 BYU on the road at West Virginia. Tomorrow, our pregame coverage starts at 5 o'clock Eastern time. You can listen in on BYU Radio. Up next, BYU linebacker Ben Bywater decided to return for one more season in Provo. He'll tell us what went into that decision. This is BYU Sports Nation. Ben Bywater. And he is drilled by Ben Bywater. Filled for a loss by Ben Bywater. We are live in Studio B. We are your day-to-day -day BYU sports play-by-play. -play. Jason Shepard, Dave McCann. So happy to be joined by Ben Bywater. You just saw the highlights. It gets me pumped just watching you out there, man. I can't wait for you, for you to get back out onto the, uh, onto the field. Welcome into Studio B. Thank you, guys. It's a pleasure. When you see that video of you hitting guys <laughs> it's been a long time since you hit anybody for a linebacker you're like i gotta get back out there or it's crazy it's like i feel like you know you've been playing football your whole life and then i go with i go without it for four months like and it's like i'm just grasping at air like i don't even know what i'm doing <laughs> i can't even wake up in the morning but uh, i'm excited it, it'll be good i obviously you know your boy got surgery so yeah we'll be so, back yeah so you got banged up in the kansas game yeah and and you were a significant loss on the defense all year um but surgery, and so where are you at on the road back? Yeah, beautiful. So got surgery in September, or sorry, got injured in September, and then we didn't operate on it till November, um, and so got surgery in November. Because your body wasn't ready for exactly. surgery, Exactly, right? just because, you know, that the shoulder area was just inflamed, yeah. right? They just wanted to, you know, we, they wanted to wait for it to calm down so that they could go in and just, you know, 
it wasn't super risky. So it was really good. I feel really good about the surgery. It went well, and uh, we're on our road to recovery. And so not going to be participating in spring, is that correct? No, sir. So, so no, sir. no spring, but the expectation is then that you're ready for fall camp? Is that Absolutely. kind of the, pr the projection right now? Absolutely. Yeah, that's kind, of, that's kind of standard, right? If you get a shoulder surgery, it's like three to six months. Yeah. So um, got it in November. I'll be out, in, uh, out for spring ball, yep. but I'll be there, right, supporting the boys, rallying the troops, and, uh, and then we'll be locked and loaded for August. It's interesting how things go. So you, you get hurt, and you, your body doesn't allow you to have surgery till November, which means you won't recover in time for the NFL Combine. Yeah. And so that leads to your decision to come back. Yeah, no, it was, uh, it was definitely complicated, right? I mean, I think we, we talked about this a little bit, yeah. you know, a week or two ago. Um, like, you know, I'm, I'm a senior, you know, you kind of in your mind, you have this track of what you're going to do, how it's going to go. You kind of have this picture perfect. And uh, like I said, so I, in September, I was like locked and loaded, hopefully just going to go play this year, ball, and then you go know, take my shot. But uh, obviously, you know, God had other plans for me. But that was the hard part is, is if I would have gotten hurt in September and then surgery right away and been locked and loaded, ready to test well, I think it would have been a different story. But it just that just wasn't the case, right? We just your health is first and foremost. You know, ball is all. You know, what have you done for me lately? So yeah. if I can't go play next fall, I mean, why why declare if if you're not going to ball? Well, let's climb into your head then for a minute on that. When you have something you love taken away, yeah. you know you can get it back, but it's going to be a little while. But when that's taken away, that that's usually a, a moment where you you learn a lot about yourself. What got you through? It that? is. It is. It's funny because like. I always said, like, yeah, I'm more than a football player. You know, I, you know, I feel like I'm, I'm a BYU finance guy, right? I feel like I do internships. I, I have other parts about me. So, like, when, when it's all good, you know, when it's all rainbows and sunshines and I'm playing ball, I'm like, oh, I'll be fine without it. Sure. And then I go without it, and I'm like, I can't even think straight, you know? It's, it's funny. So, you know, I talk about that with my dad all the time. It's just like I need to be doing something. I need to be working something, either a project or just, like, I can't stay idle. So it was hard. It, those four months were hard, and... You know, you're going through it, you're going through the ringer, you're fighting. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, what I learned most was just I can't isolate myself. I got to be around people I love, got to be around my family, got to be around, you know, my friends, just people who uplift me. And, and so that was really good. That was eye-opening for me. That's, yeah. that's a perfect lead into what I wanted to ask you. So what are you, what's the plan then for you during spring? Do you go in and, like, I'm just going to get as many mental reps as I can? Do you yeah. go in and sort of help out? sort of coaching like what what do you do then during spring to make sure that you're sharp mentally but also to try like you said just kind of stay busy and still be a part of things yeah that's a great question what i do is like they, they don't want you to you're not checking out by any means yeah. so when the team is like when they're doing physical stuff running or, or hitting like i'll i'll be with my pt guys and yeah. we'll be doing modified stuff right for the rest of my body, for the other three limbs, like I'm, I'm dialed, but just my right shoulder. <laughs> right, you need all four. Exactly, you need all four. And then obviously when we go team, when we're you know, going good on good, I'll just be with mental reps. And then I'm in all the meetings as well. So it's pretty hands-on for you know, not playing. So the Big 12 schedule comes out. Um, and you only played in one Big 12 game last year. Know, so this geez. is like your first year of the Big 12. <laughs> when some of your teammates, Batty and those guys, they're, they're veterans now. <laughs> We're uh, lucky. That schedule comes out. Is there a game that you look for first, or are you just looking to get – or is it Southern Illinois because it means you're back? Yeah, that's a great question. I, every year, you obviously, look at the schedule. You're stoked, right? You see all the big teams. And I, I think when I looked at this team, I look, I look at the schedule initially, I'm like, I got to – I got to go eat some more chicken. I need to go hit the weights a little more. Like these are some big boys, you know. I'm like, I only got through three quarters of, of a Big 12 game last year, so something's got to change for me, and that's been uh, it's been huge for me to just realize, hey, like if if I want to play a full healthy season, I got to change, you know, diet, way I'm eating, and obviously there's some sort of luck, bad luck involved in that, you know. I feel like I'm pretty dialed, but yeah, as far as the games, um, I see uh, that obviously the Utah game, right? right. The Utah game, yeah. um, that's that's a great game. Oh, are they on the schedule this year? <laughs> <laughs> no, we haven't circled it. Come on, no. But, uh, yeah, so that, that game's probably the biggest one for me. Do you think uh, that the team shares that same attitude that you have or has to share that same attitude of, I got to eat more, I got to get bigger, I got to get more physical because of what they experienced last year? 100%. You see, game, like, we had some games out there that obviously did not go our way. You know, we're getting, we're getting pushed around. And, I mean, as a competitor, as, like a, as a, somebody who's prideful and, and stands you know, on their business, it's like you want to go out there and, and get revenge and, and go play against those guys again. And uh, so I know the team's feeling that way, and uh, I'm excited to see what we do. After having one year now in this new defensive scheme, 
How much more excited are you about going into year two when you have so much more familiarity? So much more excited. It's it's actually crazy because you know I watch film now with the with the scheme how we run it and it's just so much more familiar and it's hard because it, when bullets are flying out there and everyone's running like if you don't know it like the back of your hand which I feel like I knew it well but it's reps right you got to get reps and you gotta you gotta get out there so I'm when excited this, when this defense was healthy. Uh, it made some plays, yeah. and and two of their best performances really were the last two games. Mm. Uh, certainly at times, um, you added a lot in the recruit announcements from last month. There's more coming up this next this next week or so. There's yeah. the portal there, uh, but there's been a big theme of defense. How do you feel the defense can be this fall? It's exciting. I, I love Coach Hill. Coach Hill brings so much energy, and and his whole staff. Right, it's it's really contagious, and that's one thing I've learned from him. And uh, I, sh- I set my hat to those guys, too, because they had a great recruiting class in December. They got the majority of the guys that they mm-hmm. wanted. I know we're, we're just, you know, filling in the holes here, yeah. you know, shortly. But I'm excited. You know, there's so many guys on that team or on our team, and especially untapped potential. There's a yeah. lot of young bulls out there that I think are going to be really good in the future. So it's exciting to see the, those guys come along. And then, uh, you know, I feel like for my job, just get in there, mentor, be the best person I can be, you know, be somebody that holds others accountable and uh, just go play my game. Well, talk to us about the linebackers room. Talk, yeah. tell, talk to us about who's in there and, and what you're yeah. seeing from this group. Yeah, I, I love the linebacker boys. Um, I, we obviously got Jack Kelly. Yeah. Uh, he's a stud. I don't know if you saw him. He power cleaned like 400 pounds or something yesterday. That's what Dave does. Yeah. <laughs> just just day, day, a day's work. It was right? Thursday. Day's work. It was Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm excited for Jack Kelly. He's a stud. You know, just gets to work. Rem- reminds me of AJ uh, Bonquichon a yeah. little bit, right? Just a worker. Um, I'm excited to see him play. You see the young guys. Ace Kafusi came on strong last year. Harrison Taggart. Harrison Taggart. Siali Acera obviously hurt his, hurt his foot, yeah. but he'll be back. I think there's a lot of young bulls, right? Lucky Finau is another guy. We got Luve, um, Micah Kafusi. I'm excited for I'm, I'm sure I'm forgetting a few of them. But. So you coming back when we talk about depth. I mean, yeah. Those guys all had to play because you were out last year. Now mm-hmm. you come back, and then the guys behind you aren't going in there for their first Big 12 tackle. That has to make a difference, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. It does. It reminds me kind of um, <clears throat> my, my freshman year, right? In, in 2021, Keenan went down. Yeah. I went and played a bunch. And then the next year, right, it's like you're, you're, you're fighting. You're competing for playing time. When Peely went down and there was a lot of pressure on Wilgar, and then you led the team in tackles, and then you came back and did it the next year too, and it's Appreciate like, that. hey, look, that these guys are kind of getting some headlines over here of this Bywater guy. Is in on all these plays. Uh, that's why you were missed so badly last year. I appreciate it. Just keep yeah. my head down and, and go to work. You know, that's, yeah. that's how I feel. What has it meant to you, being a, a, a local guy from the state of Utah, what has it meant to you to be a part of this program? And I know we talked a lot last year with last year being the first Big 12 season, but, yeah. but to be part of this program as it has come in to this new, well, it's, it started this brand new journey. What has it meant to you to be a part of all of this? Yeah, I think uh, it, it means the world, really. You know, I think growing up, obviously, I was in the Mountain mountain West. We were in the Mountain West when I was a fan growing up. And uh, I remember in high school, there was rumors of us joining the Big 12. And I, was, I thought that would have been so cool. So for me to actually be a part of it, for it to uh, come to fruition, you know, five, six, seven, eight years later, is uh, it's special. And so, you know, I, I grew up in Salt Lake. There's a lot of Utah fans up there. But, you know, for the for the few, you know, loyal, true Cougars, it's... Uh, hey, look, not... once you get to Bountiful, you're back in blue country. <laughs> that's, that's actually very true. <laughs> we, we've all seen the demographic. Yeah, so it, it really is just a blessing. It's a blessing. And, and I'm excited to just, you know, go back for one more. All right, we got a challenge for you. And maybe don't tell Jay Hill this. Okay. Um, but, you know, the sideline mics are pretty powerful. And you can pick up what players say really especially before snaps if the crowd's <laughs> like you know so when you're changing a defensive play we want you to go back to your Guatemalan missionary days and change the play in Spanish <laughs> you get on sports center you get everybody it's a little quiet all of a sudden here's you here's me barking out a change play all in Spanish we'll see how many of your teammates want to know what you're talking about I but might, we know I, the other team won't <laughs> I might never play another snap when, when <laughs> yeah I, there's, a risk. Snap, <laughs> there's a risk like, yeah, okay. <laughs> but that would be a great moment yeah that would yeah. be fun <laughs> well I know look it's uh, it's basketball season now but everybody always looks forward to football season yeah. um, the good news is you're on the road to recovery that's what everybody is uh, is happy to uh, to know uh, we can't wait to see you out there 100% healthy before you go we got to give you the BYU Sports Nation karma for helping with the uh with the rehab and getting ready for the season 
So we'll, we give that to you, and uh, thanks for coming. It's always good to see you. Hey, fellas, appreciate it. I'm excited, and uh, thanks for having me. We'll see you at practice later this month. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks. The great Ben Bywater. Basketball weekend for the men and the women. Uh, tomorrow, West Virginia is here. Women's basketball, the ranked 23rd in the country. Uh, 6 o'clock Eastern time. Kristen Kozlowski, Jimmer Fredette, and I what? will call the game on Big 12 now on ESPN+. Plus. And Jason will have the radio play-by-play -play on BYU Radio. We wanted to send him to radio for you, but the money just wasn't right. You mean Jimmer doesn't want to be my analyst? Jimmer's hanging out with us. <laughs> All right, I'll go solo on the radio. <laughs> That's fine. Speaking of BYU women's basketball, what will be the key to upsetting number 23, West Virginia? We'll discuss after the break. This is BYU Sports Nation. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Follow BYU Sports Nation on social media for content throughout today on Facebook, X, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. You have a TikTok, by the way? I did, and then I got rid of it. I never had one. Don't plan to get one either. Uh, it was too weird. I'm like, I don't <laughs> want to be a part of it. <laughs> Welcome back to Studio B. <laughs> Shep and Dave, let's get to today's headlines. And the headline is the men's basketball number 22 on the road at West Virginia. The Cougars are 3-4 and four in the Big 12. Mountaineers 3-5 and five in league games. All three of West Virginia's Big 12 wins have been at home. Ken Palm has the Cougars a 12-point favorite. One of the biggest favorites of the weekend. I'll take it. Well. Pre-game coverage starts at 5 Eastern on BYU Radio. BYU women's basketball will look to snap a two-game losing streak when the Cougars host number 23 West Virginia tomorrow. BYU 2-7 and seven in the Big 12 this year, while the Mountaineers are 7-2. and two. The great Jimmer Fredette will join the great Dave McCann and the great Kristen Kozlowski. It's a lot of great. It's a lot, it's a lot of great that will be on ESPN+. Plus on the TV call. I will have the radio call at 6 Eastern. I'm just going to try to be good. Those guys are good. <laughs> BYU quarterback Keaton Slovis helped lead the West to a 26-11 victory last night in the East-West Shrine game. Slovis started and directed the West to 10 points while he was out on the field. Texted back and forth after the game. He was happy to be out there, his shoulders healthy, yeah. smiling, and uh, good for him. Also, Isaac Rex, Ryan Rico representing BYU back at the East-West Shrine Week. Rex named to the All-West practice squad. I think that's good. Yeah. Seems like that would be good. Absolutely. Kingsley Suamatei is going to play in the Senior Bowl in Mobile, Alabama. That's tomorrow, 1 o'clock Eastern time on the NFL Network. Saw some practice footage of him yesterday throwing a guy to the ground. It's like, whoa. It's always fun to watch these guys now that the season's over and they're preparing for that next stage in life in the NFL, it's fun to see them going against the best of the best in some of these. And look, a guy like Keaton Slovis, I know last year was not the year that he had hoped he was going to have and injuries played a role in that, but I, I, I never thought that this was going to hurt his NFL potential because he still has every measurable that is important in the NFL. He's still one of those guys that I think NFL teams salivate over the potential of what he can do. I love that he's a great teammate and a good guy, yeah. and you just cheer for those guys. Maybe yeah. a little bit more than the bad guys. You hope everyone does. Sure, get, yeah. But you cheer for the good guys. All right, Puka Nakua, speaking of the good guys, will compete in the Pro Bowl flag football game on Sunday. Puka participated in the best catch game in the skills showdown last night. More on that coming up in yeah, a moment. Yeah, I didn't see that, so I'm looking forward to seeing it. BYU Gymnastics hosts West Virginia tonight in the Cougars 2024 home opener at the Marriott Center. You can watch it at 9 Eastern on Big 12 now on ESPN+. Former BYU runners Connor Mance, Clayton Young, Nico Montanez, Jacob Hesslington, and Connor Weaver will all be running in the Olympic Marathon Trials in Orlando tomorrow. The top two finishers will qualify for the Paris Olympics. Good luck to all of them, and what an opportunity. A couple of those guys ran really well in Chicago. Yep. I mean, they got a legitimate shot, and I know you just missed out on the time. There's always... Just, some, just there's, barely. There's always four years from now. Both the BYU men's and women's tennis teams in action this weekend. The men host Montana State tomorrow. The women play later today at Utah State. All right, those are today's headlines. Now, let's whip it. Cougar Whip Around, presented by Maersk, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. Dave, So let's thought? bring our uh, trending topic yes. uh, over to the women's side. We mm -hmm. opened the show talking about the men. The BYU women beat number 23 West Virginia at home tomorrow if... Uh, it all boils down to turnovers with BYU women's basketball. Um, they have really struggled this season turning the basketball over. And I was talking about with the men that if you turn the ball over, you can't let it lead the points. 
For on the women's side, more times than not, those turnovers have come back to really haunt the Cougars because the opposition has, has scored off of those. So if BYU can limit the turnovers, and I mean 12 or less, which is very possible because in all the games where they've had close to 20, they've also had several where it was under 10 or 11 or 12. They can do this, but against a team like West Virginia that is very active defensively, can force a lot of steals, turnovers to me will be the key. Yeah, I'm really interested to see how BYU's two young freshman guards handle the number one defense in the country when it comes to steals, the full court press. Yeah. The young guards are not an issue for West Virginia. Four starters back from last year's tournament team. Huge challenge for BYU's young guns. Yeah. I'm curious to see how they do. Should be a fun one tomorrow. All right, since 2002, every national champion has finished the season ranked top 40 in Ken Palm's adjusted offense and top 25 in the Ken Palm adjusted defense. There are 13 teams that fit these qualifications. BYU is one of them. So Dave, does this mean BYU is a national championship contender? This is not a blue goggle thing. Our people didn't put that together, yeah. right? This is Ken Palm. Ken stuff. Palm, yes. This is what this is what totally has determined. Neutral guy. Yes. Um, I see that, and I see BYU as a contender to make the NCAA tournament. He's got them as potentially contending for the national title. You got to get there first. Contending contenders. So contending contenders, uh, as opposed to pretenders. And that's why yeah. tomorrow's game's so big. Tomorrow's game is very important for BYU's quest yeah. to the big dance. Uh, and of course, also to the national championship, yeah. according to Kevin. Look, I'm gonna go full coach speak. We're on to West Virginia. That's all I'm worrying about right now. <laughs> I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna worry about all this other big picture. It's all about the Mountaineers tomorrow. Thank you, Bill. Yes. Appreciate that. <laughs> Puka Nakua competed in the Pro Bowl Skills Showdown yesterday in the best catch game. Now Puka, watch this. He catches a pass while wakeboarding. <laughs> That's so insane. That's what Puka does. Uh, is this catch better than his catch to beat Boise State? Look, um, because I was more emotionally involved in the catch to beat Boise State, you're not going to get me to say it's not that one, but that's pretty impressive. So here's the Boise State one. Yeah, that one I, saved the season. That, that, that won the game. <laughs> That one made my weekend. Might have got him the job with the Rams. <laughs> yeah, so there's not a chance in the world I'm going to say that the wakeboard catch is better than that one. But were any of us surprised to see Gapuka catching a ball no. on a wakeboard? No. 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 I was just surprised there wasn't another guy or two out on other wakeboards trying to defend him when he still caught that. We could do like the pyramid thing where they, you stack him up. Puka could be at the top of catch, right? Go right to the top. There we go. All right. Former BYU wide receiver Margin Hooks took a photo with former teammate and current Texas Longhorn head coach Steve Sarkeesian. How cool is this seeing these two together? It's just awesome. I saw Sark last night being interviewed in the Shrine game because he went to their Hall of Fame. And Got the dueling hand signs here. Margin is a fantastic yes. rep for BYU. And they both love BYU. Yep. One just has a job where he has to wear a burnt orange jacket. Yeah. yeah. You think he owned this jacket, that jacket he was wearing before he got the Texas job? No. Yep. No chance. Yep, no chance. All right, former BYU hoop star Jeff Chapman is featured in the latest Deep Blue. You won't want to miss his story of pursuing playing Division I basketball and breaking barriers at BYU along the way. This is BYU Sports Nation. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Maersk, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation live here in Studio B. He's Dave McCann. My name is Jason Shepard. Jeff Chapman knew he wanted to play basketball at a D1 school growing up. He didn't know in doing so that he would help break barriers at BYU and put himself on a path that would change his life. This is Deep Blue. So this is the high school I went to. It was established back in 1934. I graduated in 1984. I remember the post office being right out here and this is where we went in. Yep, this is my gym. Looks like they have the same rims that I had. Look how old they are. Even just a smart, you know, bright young man. You know, he, he always been that. He's... Jeff, um, his family is amazing. He grew up in a strong Baptist home in Alabama. The most important thing to my parents was God and, and Jesus. They were very religious people. We read the Bible together. We went to church together all the time. Playing in this gym, hoping for a Division I scholarship was everything. I can remember 
coming here as a seventh grader and playing and seeing the varsity guys and saying, one day I'm gonna be one of those varsity guys. And when I finally did my sophomore year become a varsity member, I remember I said I have to play really well and do really well and become all state so I can get the attention of the big schools in the area. So this is where it's all started for me, right here in this gym. So Jeff was playing at an all-star basketball game and it happened to be at the same time that the NCAA a tournament was going on. So Coach Reed happened to be able to watch um, the all-star game and saw Jeff play, decided to offer him a scholarship. And so he called Jeff the next week and offered him to come play at BYU. That building right there is where the band practiced at. The band director, who had never spoken to me in his life, he told me, so you're going to BYU, huh? And I said, yes. And he said, well, let me tell you about Mormons. And he started to lay in the Mormons. And so it was just funny to see how different things were once I got to BYU than what people were saying uh, about it. BYU in the 80s, so I would say it wasn't quite as hard to get into as it is now, but culturally, LDS and white. There were only 36 black people on campus in 1984 out of 26,000 students when I got there. I was down south of campus of BYU and I saw this black kid walking down the road and I noticed he wasn't an athlete and the only black people I knew at BYU were athletes. So I said, I'm gonna talk to this guy. So I pulled him over and I asked him, you're not an athlete, right? He said, no. And I asked, well, what are you doing here? And he said, you know, I just got home from my mission and I was shocked. We ended up becoming roommates and became, you know, long lasting friends after that. He did not want to join the church. He said he was staying his Southern Baptist religion. People would invite him over and then have the missionaries and things like that. And he always thought that was kind of funny, but. Sometimes I did have questions, but I didn't want to ask them because I knew they would see that as interest and probably step up the pace and put, you know, talk to me more, and I didn't want that. So when Cruz and I became roommates, I decided to start asking him questions. But the cool thing he did was he would answer the question and then wouldn't say anything else about it. And I was like, okay, he's not pressuring me. I could just ask him anything. He'll give me an answer. He won't continue to try to get me baptized. It finally got to the point where I told him that I wanted to take the discussions and learn more about the gospel. So the missionaries came and he always laughs. He says they had him well covered because they were, two, first of all, sisters, which was always good. And then one was a basketball player and then one was from Jamaica. And they didn't know what to do with me because they said, do you want to get baptized? And I said, no, I, I believe it's true, but I don't have that conviction in my heart. And then we were reading in the Book of Mormon, and then someone read Ether 27 about being humble. And I remember thinking to myself, instead of me being humble and really want to know if this is true, I wanted to be proven to me that it was true. And I said a little quick prayer to myself, Heavenly Father, I'm humbling myself now. If this church is true, please let me know. And at that moment, the Spirit came down on me so strong that I started to weep, but I was happy. I'll just never forget that experience. I was, you know, content being a Southern Baptist. I'm just blown away how things have, have turned out. I joined the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and I met you, and... Like the Lord put you in the right spot and sent you to BYU. In so many different ways, Jeff was a trailblazer at BYU. He was here when we were growing at a certain place, and now he gets to walk into a locker room that is so reflective of great people from all over the world. He is a legacy member of this BYU basketball community and how it's grown to encompass the entire world. I think people seeing me play, they realize, mm, if he can do well there, I can too. And I think that helped a little. If you living right and you say you this or that, that's, you know, that's your, I don't, I don't disrespect nobody's religion. But long as you know, I, I, I'm proud of him. I don't have to worry about you. I think he's an amazing person. He's taught me so much. Just has been a great example and grateful to have been 
on this journey with him and know we have a lot more to go and we'll have trials and joys and glad that we can do it together. I look back and uh, all the successes that I have had and it all started here. I just don't know if I would have been as successful as I am now if I didn't have the love and support of this community and the teachers here and my pastor. So I am just internally grateful for what it has done for me. Great story. And I have not had the chance to see Jeff in a couple of years, but I used to see him a lot. He had, he had a son and a daughter that both yeah. played at BYU. And so I would see him all the time and I would get a chance to talk to him. And he is such a joy to be around. And I think the word that I, I take from this is what Coach Pope mentioned. He's a trailblazer at B, with BYU basketball. And the fact that he is a great representative of BYU, I, I absolutely love everything about that. If there was a top 20 poll of great people, he'd be in that. Oh, yeah. Um, so positive. Yes. And, uh, and he's gone through a lot. And, uh, and, and he's, he's wise enough to know what he wants. And, uh, and, and sometimes it, we get that way as we get older. We get a little more perspective on things. And, and uh, he's been great. He's around the program now, more yep. than he's ever been. Um, he's watching the games. He, he uh, would, would text back and forth. And, and he and Blaine Fowler are really tight. And, and so it, it, we've gotten, I've gotten to know him more this last year mm -hmm. and a half than, than my whole life. Um, and he's just good. He's good. Yes. You know, and you, he's, very, he's, he's very kind. And you know what? He was a good basketball player. And he was a heck of a basketball player. So in player. 88, he's part of that 17-0 yep. team that, uh, that was right on the cusp of becoming the first BYU team to be ranked number one. Uh, but they got beat by UAB. And I asked him about that the other day. And he, he, first of all, he got after me for asking it because <laughs> it didn't need to come up. But that still pains him. And they, yeah. they, you know, those feelings in the locker room of, dang, we had a shot to do that. Uh, that's the, what sports gives you. You know, it gives you memories. Some are good yeah. and some aren't. Some aren't. But that team he had, Mike Smith, Nate Call, uh, Andy Tools, and you just go down the line. That was a dominant BYU yeah. basketball team. Maybe one of the best ever, if not the best ever. It was right in that conversation. And, um, and it was a special guy. And, and Jeff Chapman at 6'6", reminds us a lot of Foose, who's also 6'6". Yeah. And, uh, and he's been helping Foose, giving him some pointers on, hey, look, you know, you do this, do that and evolve and, 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 and become a, uh, a player with a jump shot, which Chapman developed, mm -hmm. and, uh, and Foose can weaponize himself like, yeah. like we've never seen. But I love to see that relationship. Yeah, I love that he's back around the program. And uh, again, what a, what a great representative of BYU. Yeah. Gymnastics is tonight, and you can see it on Big 12 Now on ESPN+. Plus. BYU hosting West Virginia. It's West Virginia weekend. It's men's basketball, women's basketball, gymnastics. BYU and West Virginia, like we've never been together before. That's right. That's all going down this weekend starting tonight. All right, we'll put a bow on today's show with more responses to our question of the day. What do you think BYU needs to do in order to beat West Virginia? This is BYU Sports Nation. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. All right, our question of the day, fill in the blank. BYU beats West Virginia if. Our first response from uh, Tater Coog on X. Is this Taysom Hill? At least according to probably Kyle Van Oy who calls him. Does he still call him Taters? I think he calls him whatever he wants. <laughs> yeah, he says uh, Tater Coog on X says they out-rebound them and have less than 12 turnovers. I ran into Van Noy at lunch the other day. The guy's huge, but he's back in town. It didn't take time. It's, it's, the NFL season's over. Always good to see uh, KVN. Nathan uh, Chantry on Instagram, we start hot and get their fans out of it early. Let's not have a crazy fan shoot on <laughs> a musket behind our bench in the second half. Yeah. Well said, Nathan. Safety first. Yeah, we need a musket-free game coming up on Saturday. Is that what they do in there in the arena? I guess. Yeah, apparently. Fascinating. All right. In response to our elite voice of the day, uh, let's, uh, it's presented by PAX Healthcare Elevated. We go to Facebook. Uh, Dallin Ritchie says they score off open shots in the paint and free throws first and then get confidence off of open threes and don't turn the ball over. So start in and, and work out. your way out. As opposed to out, yes. working your way in. And then uh, obviously don't turn the ball over. Interesting, when Foose is in there, they're in working yes. their way out. When Khalifa's in there, he's out and they're working in. Here's what I like, though, and I said this earlier. I like the fact, though, that they can mix it up a little bit. Y you can start out going one way, and if it's not working, boom, you can go to the other. Yeah. 
All right, today's Rise and Shout presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. Good luck to Connor Mance, Clayton Young, Nico Montanez, Jacob Heslington, and Connor Weaver. They are running in the Olympic Marathon Trials in Orlando tomorrow. Good luck to all of them. I'm more of a sugar-coated breakfast cereal guy, <laughs> but tomorrow they should all eat their Wheaties. Amen to that. And run crazy. All right, our thanks to today's guest, Ben Bywater. Conversation continues 24-7 on X Instagram, Facebook. All of our shows are on demand on BYUSN.com. For Dave, I'm Jason. Shout out to Vuk Ivanovich. See you tonight for Gymnastics Home Opener at 9 Eastern. Go Cougs!